Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everyone having a great and wonderful day. And it seems that Biden knows no tale. He fails not to completely make everything worse, but he also decides to give $100 million to Hamas after, you know, the so-called strike that they did or the terrorism attack that they did on Israelis. Because we should totally be justifying and defending people who did a horrible terrorist attack. It's something like this that is completely beyond I can even imagine being stupid. Now, I'm not going to go on and say that uh, who is right or who is wrong in terms of the land or whatever. But I will say that we probably shouldn't be giving money to people that decided to kidnap and do all their horrible atrocities to civilians. And this is the reality of things. We have this here. Biden compares Hamas attack to 15 9 11s. President says the U.S. will stand by Israel, urge them not to be consumed by rage, and announces $100 million in aid to Gaza and the West Bank in Tel Aviv speech. Joe, President Joe Biden warned Israel not to become consumed by with rage, even as he promised that the U.S. stood with Israelis and their demand for justice after suffering a slaughter equivalent to the 15 9 11s. He delivered a speech adding with anger at the end of a day in Tel Aviv, meeting Israeli leaders and victims of the Hamas terror attack. We've seen it described as Israel's 9 11, Biden said. For a nation the size of Israel, it was like 15 9 11s. Uh, the scale may be different, but I'm, but I'm sure those horrors have tapped into so, oh, have some kind of primal feeling in Israel, just like it did in America. Shock, pain, rage, on consuming rage. The words were part of uh, Day's main message, if any commitment to stand with Israel after 1,500 people were murdered by Hamas gunmen. Let me put it this way. That uh, it was used to be around a few hundred people, right? Now we're going around 1,300 people. And part of the... Uh, um, and part of it was, uh, I would say, uh, <laughs> a lot less of a problem issue. But here's the problem here, Joe Biden, and your idiocy. I don't think you can be a, a, a country that would allow a group of people kill 1,300 plus of your people and then say, oh, we're not going to be consumed by rage after they did horrible things to our kids, their women, and their, uh, and their, uh, people, and, uh, their people, right? That they just, just, you can't really say that's what's going to, you're going to do it. And by the way, if they did do this, Hamas would just do it again because you would give them a hundred million dollars and then they would do spend that hundred million dollars to hurt other people because ignorance of some people thinks that they wouldn't be spending that hundred million dollars to do damage to other people. Yes, they wouldn't spend the hundred million not to help the people, but to cause more damage to Israelis and the American people. That's exactly what they would do. So I, I would really like Joe Biden to have that happen to our people during 9-11 and see what really thinks about it. Of course, I don't think it would be right for us to go to war and start a world war, but I mean, if you go and attack people, innocents, and cause thousands upon thousands of deaths, then the consequences are on you at that point. The fallout meant plans for a summit of Arab leaders in Jordan was a, were abandoned, undermining some of the goals of Biden's trip. Instead, he used his speech in Tel Aviv to reiterate U.S. support for an eventual Palestinian state and announced $100 million in aid for Gaza and the West Bank. He also warned Israel against lettering fury guide his response. You can't look at what has happened here to mothers and fathers and grandparents, sons, daughters, children, ever babies, and now scream out for justice, he said. Justice must be done. But I caution this, while you feel that rage, don't be consumed by it. After 9-11, we were raging in the United States. While we sought justice and got justice, we also made mistakes. Right, but again, I don't know what you want them to do. I think this is something that can only Israelis can really decide on doing, and... That is, um, that is honestly on the Gaza people, uh, on the Israelis people, honestly, to decide that, that, that made that decision. Because honestly, uh, you can't really say that, uh, that their, whatever the decision that they make is not the right one. And we can't go on to say that who is in the right in terms of what border and what place is owned to certain people, right? We, we can't really decide, we can't really say that. However, we can't, however, we can say that people going and killing thousands of Israel, Israeli people is, a, is um, going too far. That's when you have to start saying, okay, now that's just outright wrong. 
despite where your conflicts or issues are with Israel, you can't say that this is an issue. This is not an issue. So we have this. His words reflected a dedicated balancing act while he offered full-throated support for Israel, Israel as it prepares for a ground invasion of Gaza. U.S. officials know that spiraling civilian casualties would pay into the hands of groups like Hamas and their Iranian sponsors who want, who want to foment a wider conflict. But he promised to keep Israel's Iron Dome air defense system fully supplied. My administration has been in close touch with your leadership from the first moments of this attack. We're going to make sure you have what you need to protect your people to defend your nation, he said. For decades, we have ensured Israel's qualitative military edge, and later this week, I'm going to ask the United States Congress for unprecedented support package for Israel's defense. And here's the thing that I have is here as well. The issue that I have with this is that the Israeli leaders of Egypt and all the other ones that didn't want to talk to Biden, they completely, uh, they completely didn't do, uh, they completely did a no show, and they didn't want to talk to him. How bad is it? When you have a president, the other countries do not want to talk to you because they don't want to be embarrassed by you, etc. That states that shows a huge issue with the current sitting president, and we need to do something about it because we have other leaders during the conflict that could obviously impact the U.S. as well that does that uh, that do not want to talk to our president. It is complete astounding that this is a, this is a, this is a problem right now. We can't get things done. We can't just be in the meeting and associate and do uh, talk to people because our, everybody is embarrassed being around this man. It is just it is a complete travesty. This man needs to be removed from office. It, it's just it's just disgusting. Israel has been on a war footing ever since thousands of Hamas gunmen poured out of Gaza and launched a wave of murder on October seventh. It has kept up a steady bombardment of Gaza as it prepares for a likely ground invasion. Uh, so it says, yeah, that's what. So this is what's going to be happening here. Biden is just going to give straight up a hundred million dollars to uh, to Hamas slash Gaza. Great job. This is this is this is our president, ladies and gentlemen. This is our president giving a hundred million dollars to Gaza. All right, so and we have this from Rashida Taub. Uh, Israel just bombed the Baptist hospital, killing off five hundred Palestinian doctors, children, and patients just like that. This is what happens when you refuse to facilitate a ceasefire and help de-escalate. There is no de-escalation. They, uh, the Hamas did this. Uh, your war and destruction are only a protest that opened my eyes, and many of Americans and Muslims, Americans like me, we will remember where you stood. Yeah, right. So we have this here is also as well from the readers. Using geolocation for the live streams of explosion at the hospital, it appears a misfire rocket was launched from inside Gaza. And then we have this. The U.S. has collected the high confidence intelligence showing that the explosion at the hospital a compound in Gaza was caused by a militant group, Palestinian Islamic Jihad, not an Israeli strike. And we'll go from this here. Saying, Israel, U.S. experts say evidence suggests Palestinian militants rocket hit Gaza hospital. And, uh, and, and they're also saying that the, uh, that the Gaza hospital compound pointed to a local military group, casting doubt on the Palestinian claims that the Israeli trade was responsible. So uh, again, I uh, we're learning that it is not the um, not uh, uh, it what has nothing to do with Israel, and they lied about this and all this other stuff that they've been doing. So I don't know what to tell you people, but this is just the reality of things. And we have something even more disgusting here. NYU student Yasmin Dehimi admits to tearing down posters of Israeli hostages and blames her exploits on misplaced anger as accomplice is ID'd as Muslim youth leader. So, what we have this here is that uh, uh, NYU student has admitted tearing down posters of Israeli hostages, blaming her exploits on misplaced anger. Yasmin Dehemi, a junior at NYU who once worked for the Anti-Defamation League and a self-acclaimed activist, confessed to tearing down the flyers of hostages that were placed plastered outside NYU's text hall on Monday and tossing them into the trash. And now viral video of their actions has sparked backlash with many calling for the university to hold the three perpetrators accountable. And in a since deleted Instagram post, Amy apologized for offering a bizarre explanation to the disgraceful act, claiming she was having a rough time finding her price as a biracial brown woman. Shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. There is, there, you are just avoiding all, all things here. See, by the way, in a third year, student, you know, you have once worked for the WNLA and a self-claimed uh, activist. Uh, uh, confessed to tearing down the batters that were plastered outside in what you text hall and tossing them in the trash. So, this is what we have here. This is this is it, right? They're they're the ones tearing it down, and you're gonna blame it to being difficult. Get the fuck out of here. Get the actually, in fact, get the fuck out of our country. You do not you do not need to be here. All right. If you're going to go and do this type of stuff and all this other crap, it is atrocious. 
Because now they're hostages and these people want to find them and you're tearing them down, you monster. These people are evil. These people are what we call evil. These are not people that we are going to call nice. These are not people that are going to stay on our side. These people are adjectively evil. If there are hostages and there are people that need to be known where they are and you're going to tear them down, you are on the face of evil and you people deserve nothing less but the immense backlash that you get. You deserve everything that comes to you. And so, I'm not going to have any type of sympathy. I'm not trying to side saying whether Hamas or the border thing issue is a problem. I'm not saying that. They have, obviously, the Israelis and the Hamas have their own problems. But I'm not going to go out here and say that the what Hamas did was justified, and this also justifies people taking down hostages' posters. I would not want this for the for you know, the Ukrainians that got attacked to take down uh, to take down um, Russian posters for for civilians, and I would not want the Russians to do the same. So that if you really want to call me biased, no, I don't want any of these people of any country in war taking down posters of civilians. This is disgusting. You people are evil, and you deserve all the repentance and evil and bad happenings to you. Because you don't, you're not on my side. I'm not on your side. I guess war. I hate war. But I am also not going to say that, again, taking down posters of the innocent civilians is the right thing to do. Especially when Hamas did the attack. Alright guys, that's the video. Like, subscribe, share. As always, take care.